A little known feature within React is that it automatically batches multiple state changes into a single DOM update. This is great for performance. So in this lesson, we will demonstrate this automatic batching within React. We will also look at how we can opt out of it if we want to, and even cover an example where we actually need to. So let's go. Consider a simple React application where we have two state variables, one to manage a simple count of type number and a simple toggle of type boolean. We have a utility function that modifies both of these state variables. It increments the count by one and then inverts the toggle that is true to false or false to true. Now, every time the component is going to get rendered, we are going to log to the console the current value of the count and the current value of the toggle. This allows us to observe how many times the component gets rendered. Within the UI, we have a simple button wired to that handle click utility function that we saw and then a simple display for the count and the toggle. If we run the application, you can see the simple button, you can see the count and you can see the current value of the toggle. And additionally, on the console, you can see that the application has been rendered only once. Now, when we invoke handle click by clicking the button, we make two state calls, one to modify the count and one to modify the toggle. However, as you can see on the console, the application only renders once after both of these changes have been committed. And this is the basics of the automatic batching that React performs. We can make as many state modifications as we want in a synchronous call. And only after that synchronous call completes does React re-render the component with the new state values. And this automatic batching actually even happens if the call is triggered outside of React. To demonstrate that, let's wrap our calls within a set timeout so that React is not responsible for scheduling these calls. And now when you click the button, the call will actually happen after half a second, but you can see that the component still only renders once for each of these two state changes. This is great because it saves us from pointlessly re-rendering the component for each call to a state change and only renders the component after all the state changes have been made. If you don't want automatic batching of multiple state changes, you can wrap individual calls or a group of calls in a method called flash sync to immediately render a component after a state change. This utility function is provided by the React team and we can import it from the React DOM module. Now, instead of calling set count and set toggle in the same function, we can make the set count call in a callback that we provide to flush sync. As soon as the callback that we provide to flush sync exits, we will see a re-render of the application. And this will be of course, with the updated value of the count. And at a later point, because of that set toggle call, there will be a re-render of the application with a modified toggle value as well. So we should see two renders, one that happens immediately and synchronously as soon as flush sync exits and one at a later point because of that set toggle. So the flush sync function allows us to forcefully immediately re-render the application after some state changes. As you would imagine, most of the time you would want this automatic delayed batching to get the best performance, but you might want to use flash sync for forcefully and immediately re-rendering the UI in certain scenarios. So let's take a look at an example. We have a simple application simplified a bit from the React documentation where we have a Boolean for is printing, which we initialize to false. Utilizing a use effect on component mount, we will subscribe to the browser before print to set printing to true and after print to set the printing boolean to false. For registering these listeners, we subscribe using window.addEventListener. And of course, on unmount, we will make sure that we remove these listeners as well. Our UI will be extremely simple. It consists of a simple div displaying the is printing boolean, and then a simple button to invoke window.print. Here's what should happen when the user clicks the print button. We invoke window.print, which triggers the browser to emit the event before print, which we handle in handle before print. We log to the console that we are going to set is printing to true. And of course, that is what we immediately do. And then the browser should display the print dialog. Think of this is printing Boolean as some state modifications and re-rendering of the application that you might want to do to put the application into a view that is more appropriate for printing. In our particular case, we just want it displaying is printing true. Now, when we run this application and actually try to do this thing, after clicking the print button, you can see that on the console, it does log that we have tried to re-render the application with is printing true. However, the view still displays is printing false. And here's the reason why. 
Because of React's automatic batching, the updates happen asynchronously, but the print dialog is displayed before the state gets updated and the component gets re-rendered. So the solution to this problem is to simply wrap our isPrinting boolean change with a call to flush sync. And now after the state changes, the component will re-render synchronously before the browser displays the print dialog. And of course, we can verify that this is the correct change by running the application and clicking the print button. You can see that the boolean is updated on the console as well as the component has been re-rendered with the new value. I'll wrap things up there. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.